So this is Gogo, the six-year-old gelded horse. Um, real nice horse, nice pony, nicely made, you know, leg on each corner, not too long in the back. Um, but the interesting thing about this one, every one of them that come here have something that is, you know, you learn from, it's interesting. Um, to, you know to try and sort out and overcome the problem so we've got a set of calipers that are designed to measure the shape and the size of a horse's neck collar but they're very good for finding how, how wide the horse's neck is um, that's, that's what we used it for on this one so this particular pony for his size um, his neck is massive or was massive now there's almost like a stallion almost crested like a stallion but he carried the weight rather on the top rather rather than on the top about eight inches down his neck he was very very wide now the problem is with that it restricted the flex the flexibility of his neck it restricted it you know quite severely so you would ask him to come one side was worse than the other near side I the left hand side of him as we're going it up was um so we had to look at ways to sort that out so obviously we want to get head carriage on him we want the bit to hang in his mouth and not being pulling on his back teeth, you know, his pre-moulders. We don't want the bit pulling on there, like you see with a lot of horses that poke their nose. If you think about it, that's where your bit's resting, is on the back teeth. Um, you know, the pre-moulder. Come on, baby. So, he was awkward to steer. That was his main problem. So we had to decide how, how to get over it. So we spent quite a lot of time on his diet. And the other thing we've done, we have um, a little massage plate. Well, it's not a massage plate, actually. It's uh, what you use for sanding down timber. So they call it a palm sander. But basically it vibrates as you run it across the timber. Well, we put a sheepskin on there. And we get the round one. You know, so it's got no corners. Come round, baby. It's got no corners on it at all to, you know, stick, stick into them when you massage nice and round. So, and what we've done, was every day twice a day we massaged his neck now what that does I have no scientific proof of this but when I've used that idea before it loosens up the fat that's in his neck you know it loosens it up a little bit and therefore I think with exercise and the right amount of exercise the right type of exercise he um he finds it easier to flex his neck and what i'm going to do in a minute is pull off on a lay-by and show you what i mean i mean he couldn't you couldn't get his head round it was really difficult to do so what he would do then is fight against the bit well that's no good that's the worst thing he could possibly do for us because we want a soft mouth horse. This horse had already been ridden um, and obviously the difference between riding and driving regarding the steering of the horse, if you like the reins, is you can put your arm out to the side to bring the horse's head round by pulling it against the other cheek piece, whatever the other cheek piece might be. So if you understand what I mean, you can pull it round and 
the side you're pulling on the near side or left hand side is putting pressure on the mouth not inside the mouth but the outside the mouth the other side because obviously you've got to have a ring or some way of fixing your reins so you would have a ring and that might be I mean there are bits that don't have much of a ring like a military reversible ball book stamp and other ones but if, so his neck was very very thick you can see now look as he flexes his neck you can see that thickness there going down it's in every horse it's just peculiar, peculiar to him that he had a big collection of this heavy fat and it's very firm that fat when it's been there a long while but I think by flexing you can help to remove that then when you obviously if he can flex his, his head you know bring his head round so if I just show you now so if I take this rein up right I can bring him right the way round look gentle just with two fingers so he can look at me yeah there well he couldn't do that you know he, he just couldn't do it so what he would do is step to the side or he'd try and pull his head back straight and when he was pulling his head back straight then you're putting too much pressure on his mouth for us anyway because we only use soft rubber bits so this was his worst side as I say if I just put two fingers on there thumb and forefinger and just ask him to come back round like that you notice I'm not pulling I'm just that's it you see him come, well obviously I'm pulling but not yanking him back you can only put so much pressure on you know using those two fingers yeah so see there I can bring him round there like that till he can look at me well he couldn't do that poor little fella he just couldn't do it so now the problem is that doesn't mean to say it's alleviated the whole problem because obviously when he's been ridden nothing detrimental to person that road deals but it's made him a little bit hard mouthed you know a little bit more than I would like what I like to do with all like I always say the best horse we could have horse pony whatever it might be is one that's you can pick its feet up you can groom it it'll lead and it'll tie up that's the best one that's never had anything in his mouth because then you see on in the other films you see that they'll you know they're much much lighter in the mouth you know to the point you you can do this you know you can lift the, the weight of the rein like that you know would bring his head round you see there like he's bringing it round a bit but not as much as I'd like if I turn this one this way same thing two fingers like that yeah and he'll come right round and look at me there yeah but you can see there's no pressure on this to speak of yeah come back round so that's been, a, been, a, been the biggest thing with this particular the other thing he didn't like was manholes well obviously you've got to steer him to coax him cajole him to go over a manhole and get used to it well if you're fighting him because he doesn't want to come you know well left or right it was the same more so on the left hand side now that could be that some when someone's riding it obviously if they're riding it in manholes and they want to keep to the edge to the fence they're going to be on the left rein yeah um, when you're obviously when you're out on the public highway you're going to be on the left rein to keep them towards the curb you know the edge of the road you know you're not going to travel out in the middle of the road are you you're going to keep them to one side so the constant pulling on his mouth when he had a, a thick neck wouldn't have helped the situation that's nothing detrimental to the, anyone who rode him or anything I'm just saying that's that's, that's how it is in my opinion I always say in my because it's my opinion 
if someone else would have an argument to say that, um, you know, they, they don't agree with that. That's lovely. That's how you learn, isn't it, is by... But all I can say, you know, the experience I've had over the years, like, which is like around 60 years now driving horses, um, that's what that would tell me. The other thing with this horse, which is quite strange, really, um, he's very, very sensitive on his skin. So when you put the harness on, you know, you've got to be very, very careful that you don't get rubbed by the harness. I'm not saying because the harness is ill-fitting or anything like that. You notice what we use, like we always have the pad on the horse's back and obviously the breast collar on him. Um, we have plenty of full collars, but, you know, a breast collar is far easier to fit and we'll cover a lot more horses than ever a collar will. But we always put another pad underneath, a waffle pad, so they're as comfortable as they can be. So you have to watch that with him, his skin. Now fortunately, Re um, keeps that on that all the time. And when, we, when they come back in the yard, most people know they're all pressure washed off. Most people that watch our films, they're all pressure washed. Um, so their coats are clean, they're cleaned down to their skin. And then what she'll do, she'll always cream them, you know, when they first come in. You know, with an antiseptic cream, obviously. So that it just stops any soreness that starts. But, you know, we get it wrong sometimes and you'll get a little rub. I mean, obviously a few days and it's sorted out. But what we don't want is the horse must not be uncomfortable. He's got to be comfortable to do what we're asking him to do. So, and he'll stand here quite quietly with his traffic going down. This is quite early in the morning. I don't know, it's just after eight o'clock and the town's filling up with the workers coming in and big trucks coming in and out. So, also, the other thing of interest with this one, it's always been barefoot. Now, we've had to shoe it, and people say, well, why don't you do it barefoot? It's just the time that it takes. I'd never shoe another horse if I didn't have to. But, and there's all sorts of things that are said about, you know, barefoot. All I can say is, you know, my experience, you can't get a horse in the in the time that we take which is six weeks sometimes goes over a little bit but six weeks to train them you can't do that um, or we've never been able to do it we've tried several times but the feet won't stand it for the amount of miles you're doing as you gradually build up the miles each day they won't stand it now they will given a longer period of time so that's the problem obviously when the horse is here it's you know is, is it each week's got to be paid for well if it went into 10 15 weeks it'd be ridiculous um but that's what we find now how do i know that well reese pony george is barefoot um just recently it hurt its soul you know it's, it's soul of its foot it just got got pierced a little bit never nothing went wrong with it it didn't do anything particular but it was a little bit tender so obviously it had to wear boots for a while um so it could keep up but certainly it's done a hundred miles in a week barefoot no boots nothing whatsoever and obviously all on the road literally every step would be on the road of that hundred mile in a week well it's a bit over hundred mile actually so does barefoot work yes it does but to get george up to that time it took a while you know of doing it and then another thing as well that we found is every horse is individual there's a lot of talk about 
a blue foot you know a dark hoof being stronger you know and, and, and standing up to it a lot better but um, I don't know about that I would think it could be true um, farriers will say that you know a blue foot's a bit harder to tr you know to cut to nip etc you know to pair off you know file even so to dress a foot is a bit harder with a, with a blue foot so I'm letting go go now because we've come into town I'm just letting him stand here and just talk to you about you know this particular horse but you can see there his neck you know like it's still big but it's much more flexible and before you couldn't do that from side to side you know you couldn't do it from side to side oh baby stand and now we can that before he would what he would do is immediately turn but he wasn't comfortable didn't have the flex and therefore Obviously, his neck ached. Um, the massage helps a lot. Just if you've got your neck aches, a bit of massage helps. And we would massage a lot of that, soften that heavy fat build up. And um, it seems to work for us anyway. And what we should have done, really, it would have been this just time. And you know, while you're doing these things, obviously, you're very busy with horses you know and a, a massive waiting list for, you know people waiting to come in or bring their horses in but I should have filmed it before um, just getting the time to do these things the only time I get much to talk about is when we're on the job doing it right oh, babe walk up walk truck He's a lovely little pony. The other thing he's of great interest to me again is all horses move different. You know, I mean, I know they all they all trot, walk, and whistle, but what I mean is the way they put their feet down, their confirmation, if you like, but the way they put their feet on the road, this horse has been shod from the day it arrived. It's been here, um, this, this one's going to be only because of his neck and other bit it's going to go over by about a week and the fact I want to spend some time with the lady when she comes down to go through all this and explain it um, come on baby so it's gone over but go on, get up the board. come on darling but the shoes are barely worn at all in six weeks of lots of road work well all road work except when you know if you do the arena is not um, it's soft obviously but they don't spend much time in there 80% of the time is out on the road doing this and the pony's taken to it really well heavy traffic so there is a little prime example I wish you could Feel the rain, right? So they all thought we was going round and round about and going to keep going. So when I asked him on the left to come over, he was a little bit wooden. He didn't answer it as well as was it. That is nothing to do with the flex in his neck because I've just shown you how he can flex his neck. No trouble at all. Come on. Come on. Come on. So he flexes his neck, no, no trouble whatsoever. Go on, mate. Good boy. Up you go. quite remarkable what we do is we show you um, these shoes a little close-up of them and you'd never believe like you know seven weeks and um, no 
problem at all. And what we all want them to be is, and these are important things, I know I've said this for, well, I don't know, 50 years, I suppose. They want to be safe, confident, and happy. And I suppose the only thing else we could add to that is also they want to be comfortable. Horse ain't comfortable, he don't want to go to work. He doesn't enjoy what he's doing. So I should say, safe, comfortable, confident and happy, I suppose. But if they're happy, they're comfortable, aren't they? So that sort of covers that in that respect. A nice pony. Nice little boy, go to work and it'd be lovely for the lady, but I had to put her off from coming to pick him up because we're that busy, I didn't have the time to spend with her that I'll need to to explain how to drive him, you know. Just let her have a you know a drive when we go out, take her out for an hour or so and so she can get used to him before she takes him home. And she understands what I want and then obviously we're only a phone call away and in this modern day and age fairly you know you're able to put some um, things on on the telephone you know on the mobile phone thing and they can send you a little film of a clip of the horse is doing this or that you know but basically yeah it's just so we've got the time come up We've got the time to spend with her just so we know come over baby you good boy come over darling there's a good sugar but if you listen to his hoofs there's no slide up and down bump 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 up and down all four feet you can get them like that on the front He's got quite a nice knee action, this pony, actually. He lifts his knees up. Um, steady, baby. Steady. Thank you, boy. So that's all we know about this little fella. Other than the fact, he's a lovely little boy to have around the yard. And they're all lovely, aren't they, really? Every one of them they're just lovely in different ways, you know what I mean? Great big truck here making a noise, going around with concrete in it. You know, he's not hanging about, is he? He's getting on. Um, and you know, if we're going to share the road with all this modern traffic, then we owe it to the horses to make them happy in this situation, not to be phased by it. You know, we don't want them to be phased or upset, do we? You want them to just, you know, enjoy what they're doing in any environment. And it's all like people saying, I wouldn't take my horse out there in that. Well, that's fine. You can take your horse out in it. But it's like it's happened to me over my lifetime. A good few times now where something's happened, there's been an accident or a diversion for some reason. But so you're going up the road and all of a sudden you're, you know, We've been put into a big load of traffic. I mean, look at this thing here. To a horse, that looks entirely different to... Um, come over, baby. Come over. Hey, good boy. Come over. That's it. Good boy. Up you go. Good. And things that are different, that's what people never take into account. Um, so you go up the road, for the primary, the most simplest example is you go up the road and it's dustbin man day, you know, so all the bins are out. Go on, babe. Trot on. There's a good little boy. Go on, babe, up you go. Go on. There's a little rascal. Come on, my sugar plum. Get up. There's a good boy. Come over, darling. Come over. When a 
horses come here, they they start off obviously doing you know very little miles and then we build them up slowly and some are quicker than others getting there but when they leave here they're all doing like this town seven miles away of course you've got to come in at different choices you know different ways of coming in which makes it shorter or longer but it's about a 14 mile round trip so we'll come into town and then we give them a rest in town obviously and a drink if they want it not a lot to drink just enough to wet their lips and, um, and then we make our way home walk up both and truck so Obviously they're, they're quite fit, you know, when they leave here. Break the old truck going. But when they see something out of the ordinary, you look at that lorry there, that, that one that's going up there we saw back on the other roundabout. It looks funny because it's got two big arms coming out the front. You look at it. So why should North look at it? But he hasn't got the ability to think oh that's that like you see something in the road something i don't know fell off or someone's dropped a coat or whatever it might be you don't know what it is so you're looking at it now i can't say to you what a horse sees he obviously sees exactly what you do but his interpretation of what it might be is where the difference is you know drastic difference and you've got to, you know you've got to think of it you've got to try and i'd try me hardest and you know it takes a long time to do it because it's easy to say but not so easy to do in fact it's bloody hard to do but you've got to try and see the world through their eyes and their brain you know and see it how they see it and you you only do that or for me I don't know about anyone else but for me you can only do that by doing this doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of horses over a period of a time well thousands in my case um, training horses for driving and I don't want to keep on about you know rubber bits rubber bits rubber bits but if you look at all the bits available to put in horses mouth People say, oh, that all suits, you know, that suits my horse, or study day, whatever they say. There's literally thousands. Well, how can I drive thousands of horses in the same piece of rubber? A soft piece of rubber. How can I do it? It's not because I'm some sort of, you know, genius or something like that. Um, it's not because of that. It's because I try and see the world through their eyes. And I know, and I've proved it, all the films on YouTube are there. I had someone make a remark the other day that, uh, I don't know, something like, I, I, I don't mind, they make any remark you like. I'm, you know, I'm happy, that's lovely. And we only learn from that. But the person was saying I drive along with the brake covered. Well, if you look here underneath here, I've always got me, me foot on one of them, you know, the back brake. Now, please believe me, and this is proved not by me, but by all the accidents you've seen in the show ring. You know, that's the place most people see them because there's a a lot of people gathered up there in there to see them so there's the horse running away with a liverpool bit and a curb chain smashing up going through the crowd and make it do it mayhem yeah come on baby so there's nothing wrong with covering your brake now I could sit 
we've been put by the side of it, you know, like I've got the rag on here, but I'll show you like that, couldn't I? Quite easily. And I can do that or that or whatever I want to do. But this person makes a remark and it I don't find it annoying, I find it you know, ignorant really. Um Now, in, uh, inferring, I suppose, that I drive in a rubber bit, but I'm always ready to hit the brake. Well, I've got to tell you, this horse here would pull this, if this was running in blind panic, it would pull this with the brakes on. Make no mistake about that at all. This horse would pull it with the brakes on. Come on, it's a little cold, no trouble at all. You know, if they're going in blind panic on me, but you wouldn't stop. And also, it's a very dangerous thing to do. You can use the brakes to slow the vehicle down so it doesn't push the horse down a hill or, you know, run up the back of it if you've got a shot, you know, stop on a six inch like you see in all the films that we show, we show the horse, you know, literally stopping them from a, you know, from a canter or a trot or a walk to stop on the six wings. You know, like to stop very, very quickly. Come on. Come round, baby. That's it, my darling. We're going up through the trading estate now. Yeah, but remarks like that, and uh, the remarks, I had another one once. We have very few remarks like that at all, really. Very few. Um, but I had another one once, said you wouldn't drive I drive stallions and everything, you know, we wouldn't drive my stallion in a rubber bit. Well, we got a colt in there who's very, very coltish. He's in a rubber bit and he's going. So... Come on, baby, let me go. And now we'll have a little walk up here. Steady, my boy, just walk. Just walk. Walk. Good boy. Yes, you are. Little old sugar plum, ain't you? So yeah, that's all about this this little fella and you know I love comments. I like you to share these videos. Um but the comments and you know I'll keep saying this, comments are you know, people sometimes are frightened or a bit nervous that they make their souls look silly. Well if it's something you don't know, walk up eh? If it's something you don't know, then that is not silly. It's not a silly question. If you don't know, you need to know. And you should ask. And I'll answer it to the best of my ability. I'm not saying I know everything at all, not by a long way. I'm still learning every day. But, um, you know, I will tell you to the best of my ability. What I'll tell you is what I believe to be true and what I've found to be true by trial and error. And all I know is this, if I can drive, I don't know how many thousand it is now, but we did have it counted up once. But it's, there's definitely more than 2,000 horses I've broke in my lifetime. Quite a bit more than that, it might be more than that, it might be twice that much, but um, just going on the years I've been doing it, um, with some gaps that you know I wasn't I was doing more you know coaching or commercial work and stuff like that but even then I was still breaking horses but the volume all we do now is break horses we don't sell carts we don't sell harness um, we just train horses that's all we do and we have like I don't know average eight to ten in at a time in the yard walk up my baby so, that's it. there you go. Over that period of time, obviously, hopefully you learn something, don't you? <laughs> Although, as I say, I'm learning every day. And, and the, the greatest thing about all, they're not the same, because if they was all the same, you'd just produce them on a conveyor belt, wouldn't you? 